Okay. We will go ahead and open up some questions for Kurt Miller. Anyone who would like to start, please go ahead. Keys to the game, Similar uh, to the last uh, game, obviously, a little bit of chess and checkers, right? What are the adjustments? Good, good uh, practice for playoff time. Um, but, you know, we had our hand on defense and uh, rebounding. And so it starts with our transition defense. Um, if we can get them into some actions, we have a chance to then execute a defensive game plan. Um, underrated for them because they play the paint so well. You know, they, they just pound the ball to the paint. And uh, we did a really good job of calling her. I think they're going to have her all fired up. Um, she moves without the ball as well as anyone in the league. So you've got to you've got to guard the paint with Collier. You've got to guard the paint with foul. She got away from us a little bit, but we did the best we could. With all that paint talk, um, what I thought we did well was we only gave up five frees. And between Dantas uh, and McBride and then their guards off the bench, um, you can you can give up a bunch of threes in a hurry, which then magnifies the points in the paint. So first game, we lose, we come up just short, we give up 10 threes. Last, yes, Tuesday, we only give up five threes, which was a, a huge piece of that. So can you, can you compete in the paint, not give up a ton of threes, and then we can have a rebound crap out? It was a defensive rebound clinic by both teams. Um, last game, can either team get on the offensive last and go back for tonight? To that point, what? Adjustments are you expecting if you had to project what you might see from their adjustments in the offense? Yeah, I, mean, I think their spacing is what we talk about offensively. So I think obviously they want to stack as Collier. Um, we know that um, heavy dose of Collier, uh, heavy dose of fouls. Um, and then, you know, what, what is their adjustment spacing wise? Because we, we did a pretty good job of shrinking the floor in game one to help the game. Um, you know, so we'll see. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, they we played 30 minutes without a lot of turnovers. I think the first three quarters we eight turnovers, and then we had eight or nine in the fourth quarter alone. So, you know, obviously they disrupted us. We got a little tired every catch, you know, harder every um, every catch spot. Like I like to talk about the, the challenge of the catch um, got harder. And so we've got to do what we did the first three quarters. And obviously their adjustment is uh, how much they were disrupting us in the fourth quarter. That was our lowest point total of the year in the, in the fourth quarter. Anyone else in here? Yeah. I'm um, just curious, so is there a second back-to-back? -back? How does preparing for back-to-back -back differ from regular quick turnaround games? And you know, how does that change versus from Chicago when you were away and you have your yeah, third to the you know, third time I wasn't in Chicago. Unfortunately, didn't get to coach in Chicago, but we did have a back to back with Indiana twice. Um, and you know, I felt like um, they were really determined. They had the energy, they had the passion in that second night in Indiana. This is a huge game. This is the rubber match of three game series. The winner takes the tiebreaker. We're going to be, you know, both competing for fives and playoff positioning. So the winner of this game, it, it, it's a big deal. So, um, you know, all the scheming, all the game plan, ultimately, who's going to play harder? And I think it's two of the hardest playing teams in the league. But who's going to win the 50 50 balls? Who's going to play with more passion and pride? We got more inflections. I felt like we played with uh, great energy. We, didn't, we weren't always first on the ground. The other night, we didn't always win every 50 50 ball, but I loved our energy. Uh, well, for me, um, you know, we talk about defense throughout the season, people are always saying that it's you know energy effort and accountability. Can you just talk about the accountability this team has for one another while on the defensive end and how it's really kind of helped you become this defensive powerhouse of the season? Yeah, absolutely. We have our pillars, uh, we believe in our, in our philosophies, we believe in our style. And so um, there's accountability to get that done. And then there's an accountability as pros to really prepare. Uh, we're as scout heavy as any team in the league. Um, we, bottom line is my philosophy is I want them to feel comfortable out there. You know, like, hey, there's nothing worse than a player feeling uncomfortable. 
and there's always actions that you don't prepare for. There's always tweaks that you've got to be able to play basketball on the um, fly. And that's where I think we can lean on our, our pillars, our philosophical approaches to types of defenses. But we're going to prepare them like crazy so they feel as comfortable as possible while they're out there. Rebecca, do you have anything? Just one. Um, Andrew Jones, how impactful she was in the middle offensively. She didn't score a goal, but she was pretty incredible. Yeah, you know, not only did you sign up to bang with so many fouls the entire time, and uh, she did a really nice job. Uh, she's so good behind the ball. When you go back and watch that film, a subtle slippage by a guard, she's there and covered up. Uh, we asked her to hedge a lot uh, in, in certain actions, and, you know, she was constantly disrupting uh, with her activity in ball screens. It just, she's a remarkable defender. Um, she doesn't get her credit, she doesn't get her due because she's not a flashy player, but she's an elite defender, an elite basketball IQ player. And so we, we come to expect so much out of her. But in this matchup, you know, there's, there's not a bigger challenge than Sylvia Miles getting buried under the rim and uh, she, she did a really good job battling with her and then not picking up silly fouls, many fouls, and it's like, you know, you see that time and time again in this league where fouls not only wins that you post up, but you compound it by fouling. And so now, not only did your best defender not beat on play, but now they're keeping up the fouls. And through January, you know, we, we took our medicine. I mean, Greek Jones took the medicine. We didn't win every battle, but when we lost it, you know, you can pat her on the back, hey, you got that one, maybe you're going to play again, and we can do a job not bad her. Alexa? Hi, Kurt. Um, my audio has been in and out, so I, apolog I apologize if you've already been asked this, but I think one of the things that the uh, maybe Cheryl had said or players had said about Tuesday was that they got, you guys punched them first, and they kind of were rocked back on their heels. So are you expecting the Lynx to try and make, you know, throw the first punch today? and um, kind of reverse, uh, you know, how it went on, on Tuesday, specifically in terms of like just the beginning of the game. Yeah, they're going to come out, shot out of cannon, cannon effect that I like to talk about. They're going to be all fired up. They know what this game means. They were challenged. Cheryl's coach is going to challenge them individually. They're going to challenge them in the group. There's a lot of pride in that locker room, a lot of wins accumulated on that coaching staff, on that team. So they're going to come ready. And it's ironic what we talked about as a staff. In that second game in Indiana, we got behind early and we felt like we were climbing the mountain to get the rest, the rest of the game. And, uh, and so our start, our first quarter is going to be really important. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Well, All right.